left us with uh, many beautiful memories. We have those memories. But we thank God for the gesture that he gave us today. And now we can move on with our life. Well, stay woke. Baby creeping. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay woke. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. And if you want to bring awareness for black and brown victims, please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your post notifications so you never miss a video. Latasha Norman was born on April 21st, 1987 from Greenville, Mississippi. Now, Latasha came from a very big and loving family. They absolutely adored Latasha. They raised her and her siblings to have a very strong Christian background and to also just treat people how they would like to be treated. Latasha was known to be very sweet, vibrant, and very smart. She was pretty popular in high school and had a lot of admirers. During her junior year of high school, she met a boy named Stanley Cole while she was working at a local grocery store near her house. And Stanley pretty much came up to her and he was like, look girl, you know, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to see what's up. Let me get your number. And she was like instantly for it. I mean, she was really attracted to Stanley. And he also had a very outgoing personality. I mean, he was a goofball. He was fun. He was vibrant. So that really had Latasha sprung. So they pretty much dated throughout high school until Latasha graduated in 2005 and she later on went to attend Jackson State University and majored in accounting. But she didn't go there by herself. Stanley was for sure following his woman. He was like, look, Latasha, I'm coming there too. And he actually enrolled himself at Jackson State and he majored in criminal justice. Latasha was a very good influence on Stanley because she was actually the one that encouraged him to go back to school and really build a career for himself. Latasha really flourished. I mean, she joined the newspaper crew because she loved journalism, such as myself, but she also was deciding that she wanted to run her own business. And that's when she decided that she wanted to become an accountant. So Latasha had her head on straight. She was focused. She had her own goals. I mean, she really wanted to be a female boss. However, Stanley did not have the same tunnel vision mindset as Latasha because he would often skip classes, he wasn't working, he wasn't making any money, and he spent a lot of time playing video games. So he wasn't really like ambitious about his, you know, his life pretty much. And that really turned Latasha off to the point that she felt like um, Stanley was being a distraction. So in 2007, their relationship was near the end. So Latasha told Stanley that she didn't want to be with him anymore and she wanted to start dating other people. And honestly, I don't blame her. She's in college, she's young, her life is progressing and Stanley wasn't really matching her energy. So remember when I said Latasha had a lot of admirers? Well, it didn't take her long to meet somebody new. His name was Marquise and he was a college graduate, a little older than her and he was a working man, took things very serious. He didn't play with his life and goals. And that was something that Latasha Tasha really admired because at this point she was really looking for something stable and she was very futuristic so she wanted to be with someone that can offer her you know stability like many of us women so it didn't take long for Latasha to fall in love with Marquise and they made their relationship finally official but this is when things will turn very sinister and dark we're gonna move forward to November 13th 2007 Latasha Norman is missing. No one can get in contact with her at all and the last person to ever see Latasha was one of her close friends Brittany. She says she saw Latasha walking to class that morning but later on throughout that day no one knew where she was not even Marquise. So Marquise he's pretty much freaking out because it's not like her to not reach out to her boyfriend so he's like you know what let me see if she left campus maybe she just went somewhere but her car was still on campus it was never touched it was never moved so that's why Marquise um, he notifies the campus police so Marquise lets investigators know like look it's not like her to just get up and leave without letting anyone know she didn't notify her parents she didn't notify me she didn't notify any of her friends where she's at I think she 
she's missing. So investigators are keeping in mind that a college campus can be a very dangerous place at times because you don't know who's strolling on campus, going in and out, or even watching you. So they were concerned that maybe she was kidnapped. So they're like, all right, well, let's check the campus cameras ASAP to see if we see her on camera, you know, walking around or anything like that. And when they checked it, they didn't see anything, no sign of Latasha. So now everyone is pretty much panicked at this point because she's not answering her phone. The last person to ever see her was Brittany and she was on her way to class and it was just a regular day for Latasha. So everyone was just like, okay, something is really wrong here. So investigators, they get in contact with Latasha's parents and they're asking them some questions. And on Latasha's parents, they're like, you know, yeah, we haven't gotten contact with our daughter. We really don't know where she's at. So they start to ask Latasha's parents like, hey, you know, did you know her to be a party girl? Did she go out a lot? You know, did she have a new group of friends? And her parents are like, no, you know, she was always focused in her studies. She always stayed on campus. She really wasn't, you know, the party girl like that. So um, they just kind of ruled that out. So this is when investigators state, well, do you think Latasha is in some type of danger? Parents did express with investigators that leading up to Latasha's disappearance, she was very paranoid and uneasy. She expressed with her parents that someone actually stole her driver's license plate from her car and that really scared her. So she let her father know and her father told her, okay, well, you need to file a police report to let them know, you know, have it documented. But weeks after that, there was another incident. She found out that someone slashed her car tires and also keyed her car. So at this point, she really felt like she was a target, but she really didn't know who. So this is when her parents shared that, yeah, before leading up to her disappearance, she did feel scared and uneasy and just really paranoid about her movements around campus. So investigators are asking her parents, all right, well, can you give us some more clues or some concerns that would really help us a lot with, you know, taking a lead with this case. So Latasha's father also expressed that he had some concerns about her new boyfriend, Marquise. He explains to them that not too long ago, Latasha and him came back into town to see Latasha's baby brother play in a basketball tournament. And after the game, they headed back to Latasha's parents' house. And you know, after an event and when you head back to your parents' house, they want to cook and they want to talk to you and really just catch up. Well, Marquise was ready to go home. He didn't really want to sit there and talk. He felt like, you know what, I got to drive all the way back to campus. Like, I'm ready to go. So while he's trying to tell um, Latasha, hey, let's go home. I guess he was a bit aggressive about it and pretty rude. So um, Latasha's cousin, he was also there and he called out Marquise on it. He's like, look, Marquise, like you don't need to be disrespectful towards my cousin. Like you don't have to talk to her that way. And Marquise, he feels offended. He's like, yo, you know, I'm talking to my girl. Mind your business. This has nothing to do with you. And now an altercation was going on. So fighting words are exchanged. And Latasha is like, oh my goodness, y'all need to calm down. Please stop it. And um, she was like, you know what, y'all? I'm gonna just go, let's just go. And she gives her parents um, a goodbye kiss and lets them know, hey, you know, I'll talk to y'all another time. And they headed back to campus. But Latasha's parents expressed that that was the last time they ever saw um, Latasha. So the parents felt like maybe on their way back to campus, you know, a fight happened, they maybe stopped somewhere. They don't know what to believe. Now Marquise is on investigators, top radar, and they really need to talk to him. Now the news about Latasha missing is pretty much all over um, the news in Jackson, Mississippi. Everyone is worried, confused, because it's like she just vanished. So Juan Cloyd, the lead detective, was assigned to this case because it was getting some real media attention. Whenever a girl goes missing from a college campus or killed, it really becomes a serious issue because you have a community of kids, parents, staff, they're worried and scared. So Detective Cloy wants to interview Marquise right away to get some answers. So they asked him about the day he had an argument with Latasha's cousin and they really wanted to know, did they stop anywhere? Did they fight on the way back? And Marquise was like, look, you know, I would never put Latasha in danger. I would never hurt her. You know, like when we came back to campus, everything was fine. We said goodbye, we gave each other a kiss and that was it. And throughout this whole interrogation, Marquise is pretty overwhelmed he's emotional he's crying but detective cloy he really didn't want to 
I guess, fall for that too quickly because in his mind, he felt like, well, maybe this is a form of manipulation or guilt. So he didn't fall for it too quickly. So he's like, look, Marquis, I'm going to need you to write a statement on the night leading up to the last time you saw Latasha. I need every detail. I need to know, you know, times, places. I need to know everything. So when it was time to view his statement, they were like, all right, well, Marquise, he looks like he's telling the truth. He wasn't hesitant about information at all. So investigators, they're like, all right, well, we're going to put the thought of Marquise having anything to do with this to the side. And we're going to really look into um, her past relationships and friendships. So they're, you know, digging and digging and they find out that Latasha um, had an ex on campus, which was Stanley. Now, when they pulled Stanley in for some questioning, he was very cooperative. But he also stated that he was in a current relationship with a new girlfriend, and she was actually pregnant. So he wasn't really looking out for Latasha. So to investigators, they're like, all right, well, he looks like he moved on with his life and things like that. But they were very skeptical because they felt like, okay, well, who was the mother of your child? Did Latasha and her ever come to blows or did they know each other? So they reach out to Stanley's current girlfriend, Simone, and question her about her relationship with Latasha. And she was very honest. She was like, you know, I never had any issues with her. I didn't really even know her like that. We didn't talk or anything. So investigators are like, all right, well, she seems very truthful. It looks like we're back at square one again. So investigators begin to look into student records and really just hoping to find something. So they end up finding out that the same day Latasha disappeared, Stanley actually sent documents to the registrations office that he will be withdrawing from school. So when they saw this, they were like, okay, yeah, this is weird. This looks very suspicious. Yeah, we need to ask him some more questions about that. So before they reach out to Stanley, they really wanted to know their past relationship history. So while talking to Latasha's parents, they tell investigators that Latasha really ended things with Stanley because she found out Stanley was dating his current baby mother, Simone, around the same time he was with Latasha. And when Latasha found this out, she was done with Stanley. I mean, that was just the icing on the cake from him being lazy and didn't want to pursue, you know, his education or anything like that. She was like, you know what? I'm really done with your ass. Bye. But before they go on and find Stanley, one of Latasha's and Stanley's friend actually volunteered to speak with investigators. He actually shared that one time on a double date, an altercation broke out. They were pulling up to a restaurant and Latasha's phone kept ringing in the car. So Stanley was like, yo, Latasha, like, why is your phone keep ringing? Like, it's annoying and things like that. Who's blowing up your phone? So Latasha is like, look, Stanley, like, mind your business. Leave me alone. It really looked like Latasha just wasn't in the mood for Stanley at all. So Stanley decides to slap her phone out of her hand. And she's like, oh my God, Stanley, why did you do that? So she bends down to pick up her phone and Stanley is bending down as well, trying to prevent her from picking up her phone. And when she comes up, I guess like her reflexes, she accidentally um, hit Stanley in the face. So he's bleeding, he's upset. He's like, oh my goodness, you hit me. And instead of calming down, because Latasha was like, oh my goodness, Stanley, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit you he decides to slap Latasha across her face. So now the two um, friends in the back seat, they're like, oh my goodness, like y'all, y'all need to calm down. So they're both literally like fighting each other. And that's when police were called to the scene. And not to mention, Latasha actually filed some charges against Stanley um, after that dispute. So he told investigators, look, you know, I witnessed Stanley putting his hands on Latasha. So investigators at this point, they're like, all right, well, this relationship was very dark and sinister. Maybe Stanley is not who he's pretending to be or trying to, you know, put on. And because of this news, the whole Jackson community is very much aware about Latasha going missing. So investigators, they they get a call from a car dealership owner and he tells investigators that they need to come look at this car that was traded in because something is very wrong so investigators are like all right yeah you know we're gonna pull up and see this car so um that car dealer he's like you know when this car was traded in the trunk area was missing molding from inside of the trunk and it was super cleaned out and it was a quick trading like it seemed like this person really wanted to get rid of this car 
So FBI forensics take a good look at this car and they discover that there was human blood inside of the trunk. So they send this evidence to the crime lab to do a DNA test to find out if the blood in that trunk belonged to Latasha. So at this point, they're literally looking at Simone and Stanley, very side-eyed. So investigators, they call Simone in for questioning and Stanley actually came with her. So they let Simone know that, look, you know, we found blood in your trunk. What is going on? Where's Latasha? And she immediately starts to cry. She's like, oh my goodness, I have no idea. Y'all really need to talk to Stanley. He's actually always driving my car all the time. You know, I don't know what's going on. So they're like, all right, well, we need to talk to Stanley anyway. Let's get him in here. So Stanley comes in and they're, you know, questioning him about, you know, the disappearance of Latasha. And within 30 minutes of that conversation, Detective Cloy actually noticed that when they asked him, hey, do you have any idea where Latasha is at? We really want to bring her home. He began to just space out like he wasn't deep thinking about what to say next. And that's when Detective Cloy, in his mind, he's like, okay, you know, we got the person, he knows something, but he couldn't really pin anything on Stanley because he didn't have any hardcore evidence yet, but he just felt in his spirit that Stanley was guilty or he knew something. So within that um, interrogation, Stanley abruptly stops it and he's like, look, I'm done talking with you guys. I need to talk to my mother. I wanna call her, you know, I need her here. So investigators are like, all right, yeah, you know, you're not under arrest, so go ahead. So Stanley's mother, she pops up at the station and she's like, hey, you know, is my son under arrest or anything like that? And investigators told her no. So she's like, all right, Stanley, let's go. So Detective Cloy at this point, he's pretty frustrated because he felt like he was this close from getting some real information. So now we fast forward to November 28th, 2007, and the DNA results came in that the blood in that trunk belonged to Latasha. Now, after Detective Cloy finds this out, he's like, look, you know, we need an arrest warrant to get Stanley. And he traveled to Greenville, Mississippi to arrest him. But when they arrived to his house, him and his mother was not there. So it honestly seemed like, you know, he maybe skipped town with his mom, but he was actually only six miles away in court to discuss his violent charges against Latasha. So they find him there and they arrest him immediately and they pull him in for some questioning. Now at this point, they're like, look, you know, Stanley, you need to talk to us. You need to be honest with us because we got all of our information. We really just need a confession from him that he did it. So they're interrogating him and they're a bit aggressive with it this time because they know that Stanley knows something. And Stanley, he just started to break down and cry. So while he's crying, he's like, you know what? You know, I only asked Latasha to come out with me on a car ride. I didn't think it was gonna be like this. So detectives are like, you know, what do you mean? Like what happened? So he stated that he asked Latasha to go on a car ride with him because because he really wanted to talk to her you know it was very important and they drove like to a you know nearby parking lot so while they're in the car um stanley is like look latasha you know i care for you i love you why are you with marquise i don't want you to be with him and latasha is like look well i love marquise and um the whole time while we were in a relationship you were cheating on me with you know simone which is pregnant right now so he's like you know they're going back and forth at it and um latasha ends up hitting him in the face and he actually hit her back um out of self-defense so when he hit her she like instantly passes out and she's not waking up so he's like latasha like wake up wake up so he decides all right well maybe if i drive around with the windows down maybe she'll wake up so he's driving she's, he's driving and she's still not waking up so when she's not waking up that's when he panics and he decides all right well i'm gonna just put her in the trunk so he puts her in the trunk and he goes about his night meanwhile um simone actually had dinner plans with Stanley and a couple of friends. So Stanley still decides to go um, to this dinner date with Simone while he has Latasha in the trunk with him. So he goes about his night like nothing happened and you know he's pretty much chilling and um, when they got back to the house he tells Simone, hey Simone I just need to take out the trash for the night. I'll be right back. 
So this is when um, Stanley gets in the car and he actually drives Latasha's body to a wooded area in the North Jackson um, area and he places her body down and he puts like a cardboard on top of her. And the way he set it up, um, if you walked around in that area, you really wouldn't know there was a body. Now, Latasha's family and friends, they're notified about what happened and now they're heartbroken because they can't believe what they're hearing. And they're also surprised about the events that took place because to them, Stanley was pretty much like family. You know, they knew Stanley. So Stanley now is arrested and he's taken into custody and it won't be until February 17th 2010 two years later for this case to come to trial that um stanley would be prosecuted came down with the verdict so quickly that stanley cole's family didn't make it back to the courtroom in time to hear that verdict cole's family left the courthouse while the jury deliberated and wasn't there to hear the verdict and hear cole's sentence to life in prison both cole and latasha norman's family traveled from greenville and were at the courthouse throughout the entire trial now they believe that Stanley was the one that actually stole her driver's license plates, um, slashed her tires, and even, you know, keyed her car. He was very dangerous, very controlling, and he possibly tried to get back with her that night in the car, but when she denied him, that's when he just pretty much snapped. So to me, it was very evident that it wasn't an accident and it was out of pure rage. Let me know what you guys think, but I definitely feel like Stanley was in a mindset of, if I can't have you, then no one will. So on February 22nd, Stanley was sentenced to life in prison. Latasha's family, they do feel like they received some sort of justice, even though they will never get to see their baby girl again. They feel like they're protecting someone else's daughter from Stanley. Towards Cole, we asked Latasha's mother what she would say to her daughter if she were here today. I will say, baby, justice is necessary. And Latasha left us with uh, many beautiful memories. We have those memories. Uh, that cannot be taken away. But we're just thankful to God that he gave us justice. And that's all we wanted was justice. Our heart goes out to the Cole family. I know they are hurting also. But we thank God for the justice that he gave us today. And now we can move on with our life. Today was the first time we saw much emotion from Stanley Cole as he wiped away his tears from his face and talked to his lawyers before deputies handcuffed him and led him out of the courthouse. Now, jurors left today without saying anything, but that they were happy to get back to their families after more than a week of being sequestered. The Latasha Norman Center was also established to talk about domestic violence at Jackson State University to bring awareness and to educate women and men on the signs you need to look out for when you're in a domestic relationship. And I just want to say this, just a little quick chit chat moment. I do want to talk to my black women and my black girls that if you are in a domestic violent situation, it's not normal and it's not okay. Often we are taught to be strong and, you know, just, I guess, be a ride or die type of chick, but that's not love. You don't have to be in those type of situations or toxic relationships just to feel like it's love. It's not okay if a man puts his hand on you. It's not okay if a woman puts her hands on you. It's not okay. So I really just wanted to um, say that before we close this video with a prayer for Latasha's Norman family. Father, Lord God, we come together and we pray for Latasha Norman's family. We pray for her fathers, her um, mother, her friends, her um, family. Like, Father, Lord God, we know that this can still be tough to deal with. Even though this case happened years ago, Lord, you know what this family is going through behind the scenes. You know all the pain and hurt they dealt with throughout the years, Lord. So I'm just praying for peace and a covering over um, her family, Father, Lord God. And I'm also praying for every viewer that's going through domestic violence right now behind the scenes, the ones that are hiding it, 
the ones that don't want to tell their parents or friends, Father, Lord God. I pray that you give them the courage, Lord God, to speak to somebody that can help them. And I also pray that you bring people into their life. You provide, you know, the finances to leave the situation. You provide, you know, good people that can help them leave. You provide protection, Father, Lord God. You know all things, Lord God, and you are bigger than anybody. So I just want to um, just say that and to let anybody that's going through domestic violence that there's a way out. God would never put you in a situation where there's no way out. So please don't let the devil make you think or anybody make you think that this is it and, you know, this is the end of it. It's not the end. So we come together in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching.